know what is in front of your face and what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you for there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed so if you know what is in front of your face if you know that that which you see is not the truth then only you can see beyond and find the self At some point his disciples asked Jesus when will the kingdom come and he says it will not come by watching for it it will not be said oh look here or look there rather the father's kingdom is spread out upon the earth and the people don't see it so it is nothing like you know don't search for a big miracle that you can see <laughs> don't go for the big spiritual experience that involves a big light show in i don't know whatever strange kind of you know things the self is quite beyond that the self is very simple so it is there it is everywhere you just have to be open to it it goes on a little bit in the same way if your leader say to you look the father's kingdom is in the sky then the birds of the sky will precede you and if they say to you it is in the sea then the fish will be there sooner than you rather the father's kingdom is within you and it is outside of you and this is of course also very correlating no yeah? the self is within and also outside and if you don't first find it within that's not exactly something which he is saying but is very important to understand if you don't first find it within then you cannot see it outside to look for it outside is very difficult only when you have found it within then it is very obvious that it is outside then you see it behind every eye of every person behind every christmas tree <laughs> when you know yourselves then you will be known and you will understand that you are the children of the living father but if you do not know yourselves then you live in poverty and you are the poverty so here for quite clearly self knowledge is seen as the wealth and the absence of it is seen as a poverty and then you are that poverty you know so many people have such a negative view of the world and of themselves and then that's what they are you know? if you can see yourself as divine then you will discover the divine inside you, you know? but as in yoga at some point mind also needs to be a little bit kept under control so that also he says he says lucky is the lion that the human will eat so that the lion can become human now i had to think a little bit about this one because it's not so very obvious until i realized that in israel there are no tigers and in india the tiger is seen as a symbol of mind like lord shiva is always sitting on the tiger skin because he has conquered mind so i think it's quite safe to assume but i'm obviously not sure that here they just exchanged the lion for the tiger so then the lion becomes mind luckily is the lion that the human will eat is here no? the human which will eat mind no? the self which will absorb mind which will start to dominate mind then that lion can become human no? your mind is just a tool if you can make it a friend of the self then sure you know it will be okay no but fowl is the human that the lion will eat no if it is the uh, lion which is dominant no which is uh, having uh, control then that is not uh, a good idea and here in another way he says it also talking about the drunkenness of mind no mind brings a kind of <coughs> highness <laughs> highness i mean drunkenness kind of intoxication no? also through the sensory input no? i found them all drunk and i did not find any of them thirsty no? everybody is drunk and they don't really want this knowledge no they are not thirsty for this knowledge my soul ached for the children of humanity because they are blind in their hearts and do not see for they came into the world empty 
and they also seek to depart from the world empty. Only when they shake off their wine, then they will change their ways. So if you are continuing to intoxicate yourself by sensory input, making your mind go high, go a little crazy on all these neurotransmitters and all these things, then very difficult to see, very difficult to find the truth inside of you. So at some point, there's nothing wrong with fun. We talked about that in the last class on yoga and boga, but at some point, you also need to a little bit calm down. And here again, in a different way, he says, one cannot enter a strong person's house and take it by force without tying his hands. First tie his hands, then you can loot his house. So who is the strong person here? This is obviously the ego, the king, no? who has the house, the body. So if you really want to remove the king, first you need to tie his hands. And what are the hands of the ego? It's the mind and the senses. And the hands and the feet, and, you know, work and sense all it. So, quite clearly, if you want to really remove the ego, first bind your hands. First get mind under control. Otherwise, the ego just has too much power. The ego is the king, and then the lion of mind is with him. What to do? First tame the lion, and then you can take the, out the king. But okay, all this seriousness, no? this is the yoga of being serious, also is compensated by the yoga of not being serious, of becoming like a child. And in that way also there are many references, even in the common gospels, to being like a child. Like, at some point he says, these nursing babies are like those who enter the kingdom, uh, the father's kingdom. No? You see some babies and he says, no, if you are becoming enlightened, that's how you will be. And the students still don't understand. They ask, oh, shall we then enter the father's kingdom as babies? And he says, when you make the two into one, and make the, when you make the inner like the outer, and the outer like the inner, and the upper like the lower, and when you make male and female into a single one, so that the male will not be male, nor the female be female, then you will enter the kingdom. So when you bring everything together, when all this duality goes, when all these oppositions are brought into one, then you will be like a baby. A baby doesn't know if it's a boy or a girl. You know, he doesn't care. No? He does not make any distinctions between anything. Baby is just living in the now. No? So this is how you have to be if you want to find enlightenment. And he also, for example, says, the person old in days won't hesitate to ask a little child seven days old about the place of life. And that person will live. So what he is saying is, if you have an old guy, you know, who's a little bit worried about dying, obviously, no? then he wants to know what is the place of life. Where can I find life? No? Then he should look at this little baby. No? Just seven days old, doesn't know anything except that which is essential. <laughs> Because that's what it is at that point. And if you understand that, and if you know that, if you see that, then you know you will not die. Then you know you are eternal. So... But still, detachment from the senses. Also, detachment is there, of course, from wealth and material things. Like he says, there was a rich person who had a great deal of money. He said, I shall invest my money so that I can sow, reap, plant, and fill my storehouses with produce, and then I will never lack anything. And these were the things he was thinking, but that very night he died. <coughs> Anyone here with two ears had better listen. No? This is obviously something he says a lot. Anybody with two ears has better listen. You know, we all have two ears. <laughs> so we should all listen. No? But so quite clear. No? You can, of course, uh, work and, and, and have belongings and all that. He's not saying that. But if you are thinking your salvation is going to be there, then you're going to be a little disappointed at the end of the story because you can die anytime. 
anybody of us can die anytime. So all these ideas about building up something on long term, you know, and in a material way, okay, no, but go ahead. But it's not very relevant. And then here he says very, very clear actually, buyers and merchants will not enter the kingdom of my father. No? So long as you are only focused on that, so long as you're only interested in doing business, then you can talk about spirituality, but you will not really go any, any much further. And he says, let one who has become wealthy reign, and let the one who has power renounce. So the one who has become wealthy should reign means the one who has really gotten this understanding. He should lead the others. And the one who does not have this wealth of understanding, but has worldly power, he is the one who should renounce it, so that he can also learn. When you keep this worldly power, then very difficult to learn. Hmm? I'm not saying you have to give away all your belongings and all that. It wouldn't hurt to speed up the learning. All these things keep you busy quite a lot. The more things you have, the more time you have to spend on it. Because they need to be fixed, replaced, insured, maintained, all these things. So the more simple you can keep your life in that way. And this at some point also means you need to a little bit detach from other people. Hmm? Detach from family, detach from everybody, because it's only on your own that you can do this. No? A little bit turn inside. So that he says also quite often, for example, he says, congratulations to those who are alone, for you will find the kingdom. Or, there are many standing at the door, but only those who are alone will enter the bridal suite. And the bridal suite, again, is where eh, cosmic consciousness and energy come together. At some point, his disciples say to Jesus, Oh, your brothers and your mother are standing outside. And he said to them, Those here who do what my father wants are my brothers and my mother. They are the ones who will enter my father's kingdom. So quite clearly, uh, uh, if you want to associate with people, then try to associate with people who are on the same path, who are doing the same kind of things, and do not associate too much. I'm not saying drop your mother and father, you know, but not associating too much with people outside of, of that. If you really want to move forward. I mean. And in some places, he is actually quite tough also, let's say. For example, he says, I will cast fire upon the world and will guard it until it blazes. So this, some people think he is now talking about the apocalypse or something. But for me, this is quite simple. The fire of understanding who will burn the ego. No? The ego does need to be burned. And the ego does need to be destroyed. So for that, you need some power, you need some fire, you need some energy. And that is what, what he also brings. No? He says, I will destroy this house and no one will be able to rebuild it. No? So... Yeah, he's talking about the ego of his students. No? He says, you know, I'm, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I mean, the wrong you. Huh? Mm -hmm. Right. Also, in another way here, the disciples no, ask him, oh, when will you really appear to us? When will we really see you? Now, they're asking that. They're obviously sitting there, so they are seeing him. So they're asking him, when will we really see this, you know, this self, this, this being that you're talking about? And then he says, when you strip without being ashamed, and you take your clothes and put them under your feet, and like little children you will trample on them, then you will see the Son of the Living One, and you will not be afraid. So the garments, no, the ego, the image, the public image, no, that is what has to come off, and you have to really be able to drop that and trample on it like a child who really doesn't want to wear his clothes, you know, you know, this kind of image, and you really don't want it, you know, and you are naked, but you are unashamed, you are you know, open, and then you can see. So, 
a little work there, a little, a little fight there, and at the same time, no need to feel guilty about anything. No? Uh, quite obviously, in in our area, the church is quite associated with guilt and creating feelings of guilt. But here, very often, he he goes against that. No? For example, somebody comes to Jesus and says, Oh, come, let us pray, let us fast. And he says, Oh, what sin have I committed? You know, How have I been undone? Why do I need to fast? No? Only when the groom leaves the bridal suite, then let people fast and pray. So he is making it quite clear that if you can keep focused you know, on the unity, if you can keep uh, you know, both sides of the coin together, and no need for all this feeling of guilt and fasting and praying, God help me, bring me, There's no need. No? This is the jhana path. This is a very direct path. No? Uh, many other ways. No? Do you want us to fast? How should we pray? Should we give to charity? Well, the only thing he says is important is don't lie. <laughs> That's all. Don't lie. Always speak the truth. Oh, and here also very beautifully, why do you wash the outside of the cup? Don't you understand that the one who made the inside is also the one who made the outside? This is also very beautiful because sometimes when we are too much focused on like changing ourselves, then we can be very focused on those things which you don't like about ourselves. But actually here he is saying don't pay too much attention to all that purification and, and you know, okay, you can do it, but Remember that the inside is, is what counts. And the outside is made by the inside, is the origin, in, origin of the inside. So if you can be close to the inside, then these other problems, they will solve themselves. And this also comes in quite a few other ways. It's a bit further on. Oh yeah, here. Um, so there's some crop growing and you know, made of good seeds, but there's also weeds growing. No? Uh, so but then he says the worker should not try to pull out the weeds because if you try to pull out the weeds then you will put the good grain along with them no? on the day of the harvest the weeds will anyhow be conspicuous meaning they will you know, be noticed and we will not be using them no? so he's a little bit saying you know, don't be too focused on the negative that you find just focus on the positive and the negative anyhow will reveal itself as being useless and you will not, not, not use it anymore and, but in that way it will go. No? So many things of yoga come here and this is quite simple. Just one line Jesus said, be passers-by. Meaning, you are in life like a passerby, like a visitor. You are just passing by. Don't get attached to anything. Don't get stuck anywhere. You know, just flow with the water. You know, just move on. This is very Johnny. Show me the stone that the builders rejected, for that is the keystone. The builders, I believe, are the ones who are trying to construct a reality, who are to, trying to construct intellectually some kind of collection of ideas and ignore or choose to ignore that which is, which is essential and which does not need to be constructed, which is already there and never changing and always you know, coming back to the same self. You know? That is the keystone. So the one who is trying to construct something some kind of religion, some kind of, you know, whole set of ideas and you have to do this and that and this. He's not really getting there because he is forgetting the most essential part, which is the keystone, which is the self. And then, of course, the story of Jesus also is a story very much of love. So you find many things on love, like he says, Love your friends like your own soul. Protect them like the pupil of your eye. And of course, love your friends like, like you love your own soul. 
this is quite a direct message. You know? Once you have found the self inside of you, once you have found really your soul, then you will see you know, that the others are just the same, you know? that we all have the same self inside. And then love automatically comes, and then union automatically comes. Then you are no longer so concerned with yourself. And another thing, of course, which also sounds familiar, congratulations to the person who has suffered and has found life. This is actually quite funny the way he is putting it. Of course, we know that suffering also leads to knowledge. At least it does is that it makes you a little bit more detached. After you have suffered, you don't really want to party. Feeling a little disappointed with life. At that moment, you are also learning something. But so, congratulations to the one who has suffered and has found life means a lot of people suffer without much learning going on. So if you are suffering, you should use the opportunity. You should really try to learn from it and get stronger from it and become better for it and afterwards say thank you, you know, for this great suffering that has brought me so much more understanding and so much more hap happiness and so much more life. So this is what you need to see. And like, of course, also in yogic scripture, once you have found this self, once you have self-knowledge, then some power also comes with it. So, for example, he says, if two make peace with each other in a single house, they will say to the mountain, move from here, and it will move. So, two making peace in a single house, The single house is this body. The two making peace are the ego and the self. No? And once you can do that, then, well, whatever you want to move a mountain, the mountain will move. No? But maybe even more interesting, because whatever is the use of making mountains move. No? When you see your likeness, like in a mirror, you, know, you are happy. But when you see your likeness that came into being before you, and that neither dies nor becomes visible, how much more happiness will you have to bear? So he's saying when you're looking in the mirror, this is always nice, you know, you're looking at yourself. But when you really see your reflection no, that existed before you, which is of course then the true self, no, which is never dying, which is not even becoming visible, no? it is beyond the senses, then your happiness will be so much greater. Then you will truly have found yourself. No? That is of course the main objective of the whole story, that in the self you find eternity and you find also eternal happiness. No? And that way escape from the like-dislike game of, of the world. He also talks quite a lot about the role of the yoga teacher, no? his own role no? in this game. Like for some, at some point, a person comes to him and he has some quarrel with his brothers. Uh, he wants Jesus to help him. He wants him to divide the positions of his departed father between <coughs> uh, his brothers and him. And then he says, Jesus says, Oh, mister, who made me a divider? And he looks at his student and he says, I am not a divider, am I? And I like that one very much because to me this is really like he's playing a little joke. No? It's quite clearly an outside person who is coming in with his students. He's making a little joy by saying, I am not a divider. Of course he is not a divider. He's a unifier, right? The yoga teacher is the unifier. He is the one who tries to bring everything together, to bring everybody together. Whoever is near me is near the fire, and whoever is far from me is far from the Father's kingdom. So, yes, if you are not with a teacher, if you are away from it, also in your mind, away from it, then, yeah, you are far from that goal. No? You need some help. No? 
But if you are near, then you are near that fire, and which is that fire? That is the fire that makes you see, is the fire that also burns away all the luggage no? that you are carrying around, all the old impressions and things. Come to me, for my yoke is comfortable and my lordship is gentle, and you will find rest for yourselves. It's also nice that he's talking about my yoke, because actually the word yoga also originates with the word yoke. No? So he's actually literally saying, my yoga is comfortable. <laughs> But on the other hand, he also says, well, a teacher must be a little bit choosy. And choosy meaning... You know, he can teach everybody, but still he has to also like focus a little bit on the ones who are the most promising, which is also very true in the old tradition. Eh? In the old tradition, the teacher would have maybe one student, maybe two, but three was already quite exceptional. You know? So then they have these stories, which are also found in the other Gospels, where there's a, a fisherman, and he casts his net into the sea, and he draw it, draws it up, and there's plenty of little fish. And then... Among them he finds one large fish and he throws back all the little fish and he keeps the large fish. So here the fisherman obviously is the teacher you know, who can teach too many, right? Many can come. But only a few are really ready to, to work, to really use the teachings, to really uh, understand it. So then that one you know, of those are chosen by, by the teacher. Before. So you, see, you always I mean, you say that uh, you have to detach everything and you have to be one with yourself. Mm. But then you said, uh, love your friends like your own soul. But how can you love again when you are detached of everything? Right. Through detached attachment. Detached attachment is a, a really important understanding, but it's not so easy to understand. No? And especially, uh, I mean, in the beginning, in the traditional view, in the beginning, there is mostly need of detachment. Because there is so much of attachment. You know? Once you start understanding your ego, then you start saying, oh God, you know, I'm attached here and there and there and there, and trying to hold 100 ropes at the same time. You know? So when you start understanding that, then first detachment is, re is, is a requirement to be able to move away from the outside world and go inside and find the self. But that's only half of the journey. The full circle of yoga no, is this half, and then the other half is to again come out and with this self-knowledge, no, then live in union with everything else. And that is a little uh, more difficult. No? It's not so difficult to be uh, happy and peaceful once you know the techniques a little bit and you have some experience and you go inside and oh, fantastic bliss. But when you go outside and become a little attached to something you do, maybe also because it's a nice thing you know, to do, uh, then more difficult. Because once you start working in the world, then there's ups and downs, things going right, things going wrong, people being nice, people not being nice. So and you, then to always stay nice <laughs> and happy and peaceful and so on is not so easy. So this is a, a circle. and. Uh, You can say that uh, this, this movement happens once no? and then you come at the end and that is why they call it the full circle of yoga. But actually the truth is that you can many times go through this circle and have a period where you are more going inside and more detaching, getting a little more closer inside and then again a period where you go out and try to live this understanding because only then it becomes true. So. Detached attachment then means that yes, at some point you are fulfilling also your destiny, your karma, you are doing the things you want to do because maybe you also have the role no? to do them. No? Uh, like if you are a healer, you, you know, you have to heal. No? But you can do it without too much attachment. Sorry. Consciousness? Consciousness? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's to, to see that behind all things, it's even difficult to find it in yourself, but to, when you see all the ugliness around, it's all ego. 
Yes, 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 yes. Well, but uh, I've said that before. First, find it inside. When you really find it inside, then you meet the worst person and you will still see it. This is not, not, not the issue. Whatever is covering it is just the ego. The veil in some people, you know, may be a little thicker, but it's still a veil. And beyond the veil, it's the same self as everybody else. So, if you feel like that, if you feel, oh, this world for the moment, really, I cannot look at it, it's too difficult, then go inside. And at some point, then it will again become more important to also again go out and get a little attached to things so that you can play with it because we are not here just to run away. No? This must be very clear. This world was not created for us to run away from it. Running away from it is just the last part. And for the rest, you have to live it. You have to enjoy it. But staying close to the self. Actually, the trick in detached attachment is that you are fully committed to whatever you are doing but not expecting any result. That is detached attachment. If you have to make pancakes, try to make the most fantastic pancakes you know, ever made. But don't care about the result. Don't care whether people like it or not. Don't care what you like about it or not. That is not important. That is detached attachment. If you can live like that, then you, know, you are really living a nice life and a very fruitful life. Mm. Well, I mean, if God would have wanted us all to be born as babies and then die, you know, then that's what would be there. But obviously, what God wants is something else, he wants us a little bit more. He wants babies and then young children and then, uh, you know, like adolescents and, and adults and old people dying, the whole thing. So, uh, we are God. So, that's what we want. That's, we, that's why we are here. If you don't want it, just kill yourself. Nobody will do it. No, I mean, unless they are really desperate. So, that's why we are here. That's the game. No? But the question is how to play it so that you can remain happy. So that you don't always go up and down and, you know, have all these uh, nonsense. The trick is detached attachment. Give it your full, give it your best. Don't care about any result. Don't even think about it. And in that way, the state of mind of a baby no, is very helpful. Of course you cannot really like do it like a baby but it is very helpful because it is in being in the now and letting things happen. Like if a baby, let's say uh, it doesn't do much of course, if a baby pees you know, it will just, it will just happen. Right? So, same thing whatever you are doing like if now I'm teaching, I'm just letting that happen. I'm not constantly wondering is it going right or wrong or this or that, you know. And are they liking it or not? I frankly don't care. I just let it happen. And then whatever happens, it's good. So I'm giving it my best, that's all I can do. So this is how to be in life. And this has also a lot to do with, you know, <coughs> not being without thought, of course. How can you... There's not many things that you can do entirely without thought. But do not let the thought outrun itself. You know, go into all sorts of nonsense. Stay in the now. Stay in the doing. Yeah? Stay in the being like a child. <laughs>